Good evening, you're viewing a presentation from the Agency for Public Information. I'm Sheridan Lois. On this evening's program, we bring you the recent meeting of Parliament. The Fisher Folk Month of Activities ends with an official prize giving and award ceremony, and Venezuelan naval vessel Simone Bolivar School vessel visits St. Vincent. Let's begin this evening's presentation with Newswatch as we join the API's Keisha Woodley. Good evening. Welcome to News Watch for Thursday, June 15th, 2017. I am Keisha Woodley. Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, Dr. The Honorable Ralph Gonzales, earlier today signed on behalf of the government of St. Vincent and the Grandines two loan agreements with Ms. Tassin Said, World's Bank Country Director for the Caribbean. Both agreements were approved by the World's Bank Board of Executive Directors in May 2017. Both loans provide financial resources from the bank to address critical constraints in human development and in the agriculture sector. The first loan is a human development service delivery project in an amount of US $10.7 million to be financed fully by an IDA credit to the government. And the second loan agreement is the OECS Agriculture Competitiveness Project, which will be implemented in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Grenada. The total cost of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines project is US $4.30 million and is 100% bank funded by an IED credit with no co-financing required. However, as part of the project implementation modality, counterpart funding will be provided from key beneficiaries of approximately US $0.27 million. The overall total project is projected to be US $5.02 million. The government will also provide in-kind contribution to support the successful implementation of the project. The National Public Library, Archives and Documentation Services held a ceremony to open their two weeks archival and records management training workshop. The opening took place at the National Public Library's conference room on Monday, 12 June 2017. The workshop is being funded by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO. Archivists at the Archives and Documentation Services, Mr. Cordell Matthews, said at the close of the workshop, all 18 participants should be well equipped to manage and to provide access to this country's invaluable history. Over the last 26 years, the National Archive has been responsible for preserving the history of the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and promoting pride and awareness of our national cultural heritage Access to these records is free and open to all persons. The National Archives has made great strides in its development. The department continues to collect, document, and facilitate access to local materials in both print and electronic formats. Secretary General of the UNESCO National Commission in the Ministry of Education, Mrs. Janelle Henry Rose, said one of UNESCO's main aim is to contribute to peace and to security. How do we as a nation benefit from being part of this UNESCO family? As a nation, our policies in health, education, sciences, ICT, dictate what our focus should be. Consequently, we have seen it fit to promote international standards through the many conventions that we have ratified. We continue to work tirelessly to transform our state, our region, through the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. The workshop is being facilitated by Dr. Stanley Griffin, Assistant Archivist of the University of the West Indies Mona Campus. 
Finally, on Newswatch, a release from the United Nations Development Programs, UNDP, Japan Caribbean Climate Change Partnership Project, states that two additional projects have been approved for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The two projects among two US dollars, 117,000, and will be implemented by the Ministry of National Mobilization, Social Development. One of the projects aimed to reduce the impact of droughts and increase in plant pests and diseases through applying irrigation and greenhouse technologies. It will target the three school cooperatives in North Central Windward, South Windward and Central Windward communities with an estimated 200 beneficiaries including female-headed households, youth and elderly persons. The second project addresses climate change vulnerabilities facing the communities including increased water scarcity, landslides and flash floods. The project aims to reduce these impacts by installing water harvesting systems and improving footpaths and drainage systems. The project will benefit more than 500 persons in Barley and 250 persons in Fair Hall. This is where we conclude this edition of Newswatch. Thank you for viewing. Good evening. I am Keisha Woodley. We need you. We need your help for better decision making for our country's development. What are household surveys? We at the National Statistics Office use household surveys to collect economic, environmental, social and demographic data about you and your living conditions. We need data from you and the members of your household to ensure that when the government, businesses and other organizations make decisions, they respond to your needs. These decisions should address your concerns about education, healthcare, employment, the youth, crime, and so much more. The specific types of data we will collect depend on the purpose of the survey. In the OECS region, we generally conduct labor force surveys that help monitor and measure levels of employment, surveys of living conditions to establish poverty lines and identify the poor, household budget surveys or household expenditure surveys to assess how households spend money on goods and services. Multiple indicator cluster surveys which provide data on characteristics of women and children. Health and wellness surveys which collect data on the population's health. And other ad hoc surveys on youth, ICT, environment and agriculture. How are data collected? Most surveys are collected through face-to-face -face interviews. An enumerator, that is, an official who collects data for the National Statistics Office visits the household, interviews household members, and records the responses on a paper or electronic questionnaire. The data collected will be kept confidential by law. The enumerator will identify him or herself by producing a National Statistics Office ID. Why is it important to participate in the surveys? Surveys only collect data on a sample of households. If your household is selected and you do not participate, this affects the survey results. The quantity of data collected may not be sufficient to produce quality statistics necessary to make the right decisions for the development of your community and the country. Play your part and participate in the next survey. Help us to help you. This message is brought to you by your National Statistics Office with support from the OECS Commission and the Government of Canada. Welcome back. When Parliament met on Tuesday, June 13, 2017, Prime Minister the Honourable Dr. Ralph Gonzales was asked to speak on how up-to-date the IADC was on filing its financial statements at the Commercial and Intellectual Property Office to address when the company will be up-to-date in filing said statements and to address when the account or manner in which the money spent by the IADC will be reported to Parliament. On this evening's program, we bring you Prime Minister Gonzales' response to these questions. I'm very happy that this question has 
come up yet again in this honorable house and affords me an opportunity to answer them. I provide the data for each part and I shall do so in an omnibus manner so it is not schematic. Mr. Speaker, I have in my hands here the audited accounts at SIPO for the years 2005, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. They're here. Not only are they here, they were here at SIPO as required under the Companies Act up before 2013 December general elections. I just want to make that point. 2015, 2015 general elections as required by law. <clears throat> I want to say, Mr. Speaker, as I had said on more than one occasion before, the accounts for 2014 and 15 and 16, the auditor has assured me, and indeed I've been so assured, not just by the auditor of Mr. Floyd Patterson, but also by the chief executive officer of the company, Dr. Matthias, that the other accounts are in draft. For instance, I have here, and they would be completed, I'm told, before the end of, 20, of July 2016. <coughs> I, 2017, sorry. I have here the draft for discussion purposes for 2014. Mr. Speaker, the question which has just been asked by the Honorable Leader of the Opposition is part of the process of accountability of the IADC through the Minister of Finance to the Parliament of this country. I want that point to sink in that the question which is asked here today is part and parcel of parliamentary oversight. Mr. Speaker, I have been at pains to point out hitherto in this house and outside of this house that there are different levels and regimes of accountability for a state-owned company registered under the Companies Act. The first regime of accountability is inside of the company itself, both in relation to the modern requisites of accountability of a company but also because of the requirements of the Companies Act as to which accounts are to be kept, how accounts are to be kept. Then, there's a second regime of accountability through an independent auditor. And that independent auditor does the audit of the accounts and is required, the company is required, after the auditor has signed off on the accounts and the office holders have signed it, that the company has to submit it to SIPO, where it is available by every citizen. Indeed, by non-citizens 
to go and search the record at the Commerce and Intellectual Property Office, at the office of the company's registry. Mr. Speaker, this internal <clears throat> accounting procedure linked to that of an examination by an independent auditor, they are at the foundation of accountability. Indeed, Mr. Patterson, as working for a firm of international accountants, independent firm of international accountants, he is required and he conducts an examination of the financial affairs of the IADC without any limitations in scope as required by the international auditing standards. Very important, by the international auditing standards. And these standards, I have been advised, are rigorous and they are the standards of any international firm. And they are subject to regular compliance checks by the head offices of the international firms. So that when Floyd Patterson does the accounts for the company of which he is part, the headquarters also would make spot checks of his and his firm's, the local branch, auditing standards and the application of those international auditing standards. Very important. So it is entirely, it is entirely erroneous for anyone to say, as the Honorable Leader of the Opposition has been reported as having said in public, that what is done in the submission to SIPO is completely immaterial to the question of accountability. But if indeed it is immaterial and irrelevant, why does he take the time out to ask me this irrelevance? How up to date the IADC is filing financial statements at the commercial intellectual property? And when the company will be up to date in the filing of these statements? But the very fact that you ask me indicates that finally you have appreciated that they are of relevance and that they are material. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Speaker, the, the question which is raised that they must be submitted here. There is no requirement in the law none whatsoever for companies whether owned by the state or privately and certainly for those owned by the state like Vinlec they're not required to submit their accounts here you submit them at the company's registry and that has been the case for time immemorial which is what this government has done in relation to the IADC accounts. Now, Mr. Speaker, so far as parliamentary oversight is concerned, it is open to the independent director of audit under her powers in relation to securing information from any state-owned company to provide any information that she considers necessary or desirable to obtain and to provide. So all the mechanisms are there and in relation to those the obligations which are placed on the state, we have made the submissions to IADC. Mr. Speaker. The Honorable Leader of the Opposition has been trying to extricate himself from this statement, which he made on the 19th of April this year. This is what he said at a press conference. 
This brings us to the International Airport Development Com Corporation, the IADC, which is a statutory body. First mistake, it's just not a statutory body. That was set up by the ULP government with the functions of financing and building the Argyle International Airport. The IADC was established in, this, in 2004. He goes on, today, 13 years later, not a single audited financial statement of the IADC has been brought to Parliament by the Minister of Finance. Well, I'm not required to. I'm required to have them submitted by the company at SIPO. Then he goes on, in other words, the IADC has operated for 13 years. And in complete contravention of the laws of the country, the Minister of Finance has not brought a single audited financial statement of the IADC to Parliament and therefore to the people of this country. But with great respect, there's no law which is broken by me. Because there was no legal imposition. And indeed, there is no magic in laying accounts on the table because they are laid without any debate. And as I've repeatedly stated, when I was in the opposition and I want to find out what happened in Vinlek, I went to the office. It was upstairs at, at, at Lyric, the old Lyric supermarket where they have Chinatown. I didn't have any facility to photocopy in there. The place was very hot. And I'll take the notes. And I'll come here and speak about Vinlek and ask questions in relation to my perusal of the accounts. Or to have someone who is a trained auditor to go through those accounts for me there and advise me. That's how you deal with accountability. But I never said that Vinlek wasn't accountable to Parliament. Because there are ways in which you are accountable. Like for instance now. And I'm accounting. This is what I'm doing. Mr. Speaker. The question goes on. When the amount or man of the money which is spent will be reported to Parliament. I will report again. And you can look at the existing filings at SIPO and you can see the trend of the story. How could spend billion and a half or two billion? I will say, Mr. Speaker, what are the project components? Site acquisition, 142.77 million. Earthworks, site works, 170.1 million. Airside facilities, pavement, drains, and fencing, 134.3 million. Building and other landside facilities, 168.04 million. And Mr. Speaker, that number, 168.04 million, I can break that down for you. The terminal building and equipment is 125.6. The control tower, communication and navigates, 16.3. Fire station and rescue equipment, 14.8. Cargo terminal and electrical substations, 4.476 million. Roads, parking, landscaping, etc., 6.8 million. You put those subheadings, you get 125.6 million. And of course, there's project management and capital expenses, capital expenditure, $84.8 million, because that includes salaries and wages for IADC at the center, the payment for utilities, interest on loans, and project, project management related expenditure. Mr. Speaker, I can say more, you know. But I think I've said enough. That total is 700.1. <laughs> you see it, Honorable Minister, you see it equals 699.99. Huh? No. That was Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez at the recent sitting of Parliament. 
Venezuelan naval vessel visits St. Vincent. More on this when we return. Two islands and keys are waiting to be discovered. Take a look at us now. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Caribbean you're looking for. Thanks for staying with us. A Venezuelan naval vessel, the Simon Bolivar School Vessel, is currently paying an official visit to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The vessel arrived at Port Kingstown on Tuesday, June 13, 2017, from St. Kitts and Nevis. Shanna Daniel has more details in the following report. The Simon Bolivar School Vessel is a training vessel for the Venezuelan Navy. It trains cadets and officers of the Venezuelan Navy. The ship is named after Simon Bolivar, the liberator of Bolivia, Colombia, Peru, Ecuador and Venezuela. The vessel arrived at Port Kingstown on the rainy morning of June 13, 2017. Despite the weather, local officials and droves of school children were on hand to welcome the crew to Port Kingstown. El amor llega así de esta manera, uno no se da ni cuenta. After everything was put in place, officials, including the Minister of National Mobilization, the Honorable Frederick Stevenson, Commander and other officers of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force, Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Venezuelan and Cuban ambassadors to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, all boarded the vessel for a brief welcoming ceremony. El ministro de Movilización Nacional está a nombre del gobierno de San Vicente, la viceministra de Cancillería, el comisionado de policía, como ustedes saben aquí la policía, la embajadora de Cuba, y bueno, algunos de los otros compañeros de la policía. Tenemos un pequeño ceremonial antes que caiga la lluvia. I'm happy to be here with you this morning to officially welcome you to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the most beautiful Caribbean island. I know that you have been visiting several islands in the region and uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines is your newest stop and your newest port of entry and we are indeed very happy to have you here with us in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The government and peoples of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Venezuela, we have a very long and lasting relationship, which we are very proud of, and we are happy to have you here with us this morning because it is important that as a region, we give solidarity where solidarity is due. And we are here this morning in solidarity with you, the peoples of Venezuela and uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines continues to be your very close friend and ally. We look forward to you enjoying yourselves here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines over the next five days or so, Ambassador? Three days. Over the next three days that somehow or somewhere you would find a chance to explore our beautiful country. Once again, on behalf of the government and people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, I welcome the captain, the crew, and the cadets of the Simon Bolivar to St. Vincent and the Grenadines 
and hope that you enjoy your stay with us. God bless us and long live the, the Bolivarian Revolution. I am Captain Commander Alfonso de Gregorio Melendez, Commander Officer of the Training Toll Ship Simon Bolivar of the Venezuelan Navy. We are remaking the 29 intrusion cruise to the exterior, Latin American and Caribbean Integration 2017. We are 100, 186 ladies and gentlemen on board on the wonderful tall ship, which is the emblematic ship of the Venezuelan Navy fleet. As invited guests have different members of the other country Navy, like Ecuador, Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, Panama, and Suriname. We bring you message of peace, integration, and real freedom, always projecting the thought of Bolivar, Miranda, Zamora, and Supreme Commander Hugo Chavez. Thank you for, your, for, for receiving us in your beautiful country and this history down. You will always be welcome on our training toolship. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention. Enjoy your visit aboard. Vale, vale. After the brief ceremony, the officials were given a guided tour of the Simon Bolivar school vessel. Welcome once again. Estamos en el palo mayor en la cubierta de casa. Este es el palo más alto que tiene el buque en una longitud de 38 metros. This is the tallest uh, mastil that this boat has. It's 38 meters. Okay. Y la cubierta se llama Alcázar. And the name of the deck is Alcázar. Okay. A continuación, el teniente de navío González. Now the uh, Lieutenant of Navy, Mr. González, va a darnos una demostración de cómo nos comunicamos los marinos en buques a vela. He's going to give us a demonstration of how the marines uh, communicate in sailboats. Sailboats. Sailboat. 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 <laughs> okay, adelante. Buenos días para todos. Soy el teniente Fernando González, soy el jefe del palo mayor. Good morning, everyone. He's the chief of the tallest uh, master. Voy a demostrar en este momento cómo nosotros nos comunicamos para las órdenes de maniobra a vela. He's going to demonstrate how they communicate to give the orders on the sailboats. Okay, este es un lugar que la, el buque no hace vida, no se movía la tripulación. This is a place where the crew of the boat doesn't make life in. Es destinado únicamente para recibir visitantes distinguidos. It's only designated to welcome distinguished visitors. Okay, okay. So, so en este tenemos exhibido, yes. eh, bueno, primero un rincón 
Oh, on that corner. Libertador Simón Bolívar. The Liberator Simón Bolívar. Eh, que a su pie se encuentran los seis pabellones de los países que liber libertó y fundó. And below it, there you have the six flags of the countries that he liberated. Oh. Mm -hmm. Y una réplica del sable, de su sable, of the sable, que fue otorgado en el Alto Perú luego de su independencia. Which was handed to him uh, at the higher Peru after the independence. Y por este costado tenemos también un rincón del comandante supremo Hugo Chávez. Podemos observar también una rúbrica. Y a su pie una réplica del sable del general Ezequiel Zamora. Que él predicaba tierras y hombres libres. <laughs> También observamos eh, Cuto, eh, eh, Dagas y sables del del, del cadete primer año hasta el oficial naval. And we can see replicas of the sables and different instruments of the cadets from the first year until they become officials. El cauta reverdece y guamachito florece y la soga se revienta. Cuando el amor llega así de esta manera. Uno no se da ni cuenta El caruta reverdece y guamachito florece Y la soga se revienta Caballo le dan sabana porque está viejo y cansado Pero no se dan de cuenta que un corazón amarrado Cuando le sueltan las riendas es caballo desbocado una potra la sana, caballo viejo se encuentra, el pecho se le desgrana y no le hace caso a faceta, y no le obedece a freno ni lo paran para las riendas. Then it was the turn of the eager students to be taken on board for their tour of the vessel. No, es que el que se merece la sabana, pues que se la den. The vessel, which is also known as the Venezuelan Ambassador Without Borders, was built in Spain in 1979. While in this country, from June 14th to 16th, school children through the Ministry of Education will receive guided tours of the vessel. Further, the vessel will be opened to the public tomorrow, Friday, June 16th, from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Additionally, while in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the crew of the Simon Bolivar vessel will tour several tourism sites. The vessel will depart Port Kingstown on Saturday, June 17th, 2017. For the API, I am Shana Daniel reporting. Que le dan, porque después de esta vida no hay otra oportunidad. The National Commission on Crime Prevention, the NCCP of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, welcomes visitors and returning nationals to the hottest summer festival in the Caribbean. We make a special appeal to everyone, visitors and locals alike, to remain alert at all times during our celebration of Vinci Mars. Keep in mind the importance of carnival to our nation. We implore you to keep it safe. Stop the fighting. Leave your weapons at home and let's stop crime in its tracks. The NCCP wishes Vincentians and visitors alike a happy carnival Carnival season as we celebrate in the June July sun. Vinci Mass, the hottest carnival in the Caribbean. Welcome back. The Fisheries Department hosted the official prize giving and award ceremony at the Fisheries Complex in Kingstown. The annual Fisherman's Day was held on June 5th at Kalakwa. The event was, however, scaled down due to the six persons missing at sea and to date have not been found. A range of activities was held during the month of May to celebrate the fisher folk of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Here's more in the following report. The Fisherman's Month of Activities officially concluded on June 12, 2017 with a prize-giving and award ceremony at the Kingstown Fish Market Compound. 
The activities were held under the theme Save SVGC Turtle One Turtle at a Time and the slogan Catch No Turtle, Eat More Fish. Chief Fisheries Officer Jennifer Cruikshank Howard gave an outline of the activities held. We had a period of one month, again May 5th to June 5th, and during that time, each of the Fisherfolk Cooperative, they were given a month of activities. And these activities included fish day and night, we had school programs and lectures. We had the fisher folk had health days where they had their checkups, their health checkups. We have plants of fish, lionfish derby for next Saturday. We had a beat splash and church service. We had fishing competitions during the last week of celebration and those fishing competitions were for the female, the junior, the robot, the beat same, as well as the main competition on Fisherman's Day. For that period, we had a total of 11,746 pounds of fish for the total competition. And on Monday, we had 4,448 pounds of fish landed. For this year, we had 212 persons participating on the day. A number of 55 boats entered the competition and 24 of those boats returned and we had an average of 185 pounds of fish which were landed on Monday. We want to thank, we have somebody who will give the vote of thanks, but I want to mention here, we want to thank the National Lotteries of St. Vincent and the Grenadines for their contribution over the years. The National Lottery has been consistent and we want to show our appreciation and also for the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines who has been making this competition and this activity over the years possible. We want to say thank you to the fishermen, those who have participated in the competition. Without the fishermen, we won't have a competition. And we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. For the week of competition, we had four different competitions that were held during the week. And we're gonna start with the beat scene. The beat scene competition, we have in third position, beach scene. We have in third position, Mr. Alban Michael, the name of the boat, In God We Trust, and the catch, she had 1,536 pounds of fish. For that, his prices will be $800 in cash, one case of beer from Hyrule Brewery, two bottles of vodka from Gonsalves Liquor, 25 pounds of flour from ECGC, and a pack of St. Twine from Prescott and Sons. For the second heaviest catch, we have Mr. Bruce Oliver. The name of the boat is Red Devil, and he landed 1,895 pounds of fish. And for that, he will collect $1,200, two bottles of vodka, one case of beer, 25 pounds of flour, and some nets, again, for the first heaviest catch for the beat scene competition, we have Mr. Eli Slater, that's the name of the captain. The name of the boat, Eliana, and the catch was 3,699 pounds of fish. So the beat scene fisherman of the year is Eli Slater. <laughs> Mr. Slater is here. 
For this, Mr. Slater, you will collect $2,000. Two bottles of vodka. One case of beer. One gift voucher for $500. A diving tank. 25 pounds of flour. And some say net. For the robot competition. For the, we had a tie for the second heaviest catch, so we didn't have a third place this year. For the second heaviest catch, we have Mr. Garrick Roberts. He brought in 18 pounds, and he, he tied with Uriah Simmons. He also brought in 18 pounds of fish. For the first heaviest catch in the robot competition, we have Mr. Benjamin Miller. The name of the boat is Trust in Time, Just in Time, sorry and he landed 45 pounds. Benjamin Miller, you will receive $200, Mr. Miller, for the first heaviest catch. Two rolls of nylon and a pack of hooks. We had 18 entries for the robot competition and six entries for the beat same competition. We had a female and junior competition on the Saturday, the last Saturday, that was June 3rd. And we had nine entries for the female competition. In third position, we have Ashley Ballantyne. She landed 18 pounds of fish. We have in second position, Caroline Williams. She landed 23.5 pounds. For the first heaviest catch for the female, we have Orla Matthews. Ola Matthews. Ola has been consistent over the years. We want to say congratulations to all of the females who entered the competition. Miss Matthews will receive $500, one trophy, one glass chopping board, four table mats, 25 pounds of flour, the floor rags, two packs of hook, four, four rolls of nylon. For the junior competition, for last year and this year, we had one person who entered the competition and his name is Randolph Bratcher. Mr. Bratcher is from a fishing family. We want to say thank you and congratulations. He landed 19 pounds of fish. For the competition for Fisherman's Day, there were four categories and we had persons returning in three of them so for class four we didn't have anyone entering and in class three we had just one person who entered for that competition and that person was mr. Ruben Bratcher mr. Bratcher is not here so his father will collect his gift for that he will he won $300, one case of soft drinks, one case of oil, and one pack of baits. And also he had the heaviest single fish, 13 pounds. So congratulations. For class two competition, we had for the third heaviest single fish, Mr. Julian Bratcher. He landed this 12 pounds. For the second heaviest single fish, we have Mr. Alan Brooker. The name of the boat, Bound Away. And the fish he landed weighed 15 pounds. Mr. Alan Brooker. Yes. For the first heaviest, first heaviest single fish, we have Fitzroy Goodluck. Mr. Fitzroy Goodluck. And that fish weighed 16 pounds. Okay, for the third largest number of fish, we have Mr. Suan Lucas. For the second largest number of fish, we have Mr. Alan Brooker. Mr. Alan Brooker. 
167 heads of fish. For the third heaviest catch, don't go too far, Mr. Brooker. Mr. Brooker came third. Alan Brooker, the name of the boat, bonged away, and he landed 57 pounds. For the second heaviest catch, we have Winston Hazlewood. The name of the boat, Fish Finder. He landed 62 pounds of fish. First largest number of fish, class two. The heaviest catch. The name of the captain, Mr. Julian Bratcher. Mr. Bratcher weighed 139 pounds of fish. And from this, he is the fisherman of class two for the competition. He received 115 horsepower outboard engine, one trophy, and one case of Hyrule Bear. Mr. Bratcher and his family is a fishing family. We want to congratulate him, so we will give him his trophy, one trophy, and the engine on this side for class one of our fishing competition. We have the third heaviest single fish in class one, Mark John, from the boat Kellyanne, and the catch, 26 pounds. For the second heaviest single fish, we have William Dabro. This fish weighed 38 pounds. For the first heaviest single fish, we have Mr. Shadrach Pear. Shadrach Pear of the boat, a power divine. And this one fish caught weighed 279 pounds. For the third largest number of fish, we have in third place, Mr. Vanrick. Alec. He landed 85 heads of fish. The name of the boat is Rainbow. For the second largest number of fish, we have Ray Anthony Clark. He landed 89 heads of fish. For the first largest number of fish, we have Mr. Venal Lewis, the third heaviest catch of the day. We had Ray Anthony Clark. He landed 433 pounds of fish in second position. And this is for Fisherman's Fisherman of the Year. We have Mr. Kenroy Bruce. Mr. Bruce landed 440 pounds of fish. We had 42 entries for this competition. And Fisherman of the Year, or the first heaviest catch for 2017, Mr. Vanrick Alec. Mr. Vanrick Alec with the boat Rainbow. Mr. Alec landed 462 pounds of fish, and for this, he will collect a trophy, one case of Hyrule Bear, one flare gun and a 75 horsepower outboard engine. The engine is not here with us today. We don't have a 75 horsepower engine. So what we did, we have put the value of the engine. We have made out a check to Mr. Van Rick Alex in the sum of $16,500. If you have your crew here, they can come take a photograph any of your crew members here with you we know it wasn't mr alex effort alone we've come to the end of this evening's presentation from the agency for public information join us again on saturday at 5 p.m for inside story you can also view further updates on our facebook page at api svg on behalf of the production team thank you for viewing i'm sheridan lewis good night